How you guys? How's it going? So we are out here today uh, trying out a type. What is that? But we are out here trying something that I have uh, never used before of any kind or any brand, and that is a lay flat hammock. Oh right, yeah, so it's like this one in particular is made by Nightcat Outdoors, and I'm not a hundred percent sure how you know new this is i was just checking because a while back i got their uh ultralight one person like tp style trekking pole tent and i've used that thing a couple times and it's still for the price and everything the value of that like being an ultralight tent is top notch uh this right here is by no means ultralight this is in, like on the heavier side of things that uh you would want to carry and it is a bit bulky i mean just for one person uh, I think this is more ideal for bike packing, ATV camping, car camping, things of that nature, even just throwing up in your backyard. This one comes with a rain fly, and it comes with an underneath gear net. Even though it's nowhere near as bulky since I took the tent out, I don't think you could really comfortably fit a bag of my size. With and I've been putting off using this in a video because we've not really got much rain, and today <clears throat> it's not supposed to rain until like a chance of small showers uh, tonight. And even then, it's not supposed to be, you know, that much precipitation. So, uh, it'll at least be a nice general test. Originally, right, like, it's just now starting to cool off outside. So, I'm still planning on using this without the rain fly and putting the tarp over it. But, seeing as I've never used one of these before, I, I am curious to see, like, how much heat this holds in. Because at the ends, <clears throat> after you tie it off to your guide ropes... Uh, you just take, and there's some little tie strings that you can take and tie to the end. This upper side has some that you put through the has one that you put through the carabiner, and then there are toggles down on the front ends to where you kind of close it off. On the bottom, it seems to have decent, like a well, I mean more than adequate overhang there. So even if you know rain starts to blow in sideways, you don't have to worry about the underneath getting wet. But I did I set this thing up. Uh, in my yard on a cloudy day and hopped into it and it was like probably 78 degrees and I closed the rain fly and just laid there for a few minutes and without any sun shining on it it you could tell that it started to trap heat so I think this would actually be a really good hammock for uh, winter camping and I like the fact that a foam mat sits in here because this foam mat in this the way it kind of comes and hugs around your lower back very very comfortable and in case you're just not familiar with lay flat hammocks, and I, this is my first one, but based off the research and everything, like you're always going to have this swag. So it's completely flat, uh, but the feel of it is completely different. And I might have to, pl I might play around my straps just a little bit more because I am on a bit of a slope, and it's causing my mat to slide down and my feet to press against the bug net. And this thing has very fine mesh. Uh, like I can't think of a single type of insect that could get through a mesh this fine it's got an interior pocket up here on near the like the head of both ends and the thing that i really like is it has is it has a little hook above each of these reinforced hoops which is something that you can't have in a normal hammock because there's nothing to reinforce it and distribute the weight other than the bug netting and that would rip in a heartbeat so at least with this you can take and hang a lantern over your head that way if you was riding out a rainstorm uh you could breed or do whatever the only downside to this is if you was just relying on the rain flying it comes a storm you you're now confined to the small space of the hammock so like it's still a good idea to have an ultralight tarp or something with you uh i just i want this thing to really get rained on and see how it goes and then this thing could be a standalone tent so this will be a good candidate for something that uh, if you live in an area where trees are sparse or even non-existent in certain areas then you could set this thing straight on the ground and you know stake it out uh, with that being said you would kind of have to i'm trying to think about these corner points and stuff you'd have to you know make sure you had your own guy lines and a couple stakes camo pattern is uh pretty unique i think it, it might be one that uh you know they come up with yourself it does still kind of blend in fairly well it's a bit bright even for uh, fall and it, it, it's shiny so if you're looking for full stealth, it's better than, you know, a super bright backpacking color, but 
it would work so right there is the little hook i'm talking about got that on both ends and then right here is your pocket i like the fact that they made the pockets out of uh the material that the body and it feels like the rain fly is made out of uh because those mesh oh the other one's over there on that side the mesh interior pockets on some tents and hammocks that i've had have ripped out and it's just you know just because the stitching and mesh and trying to have any type of load on it isn't really uh, going to work out in the long term there's the gear hammock the sun's kind of working against us right now but it's nice that it comes with that it just clips into place you know up there in the corner there's a closer look at these poles and then you've got these tie strings here that you can use to tie to the pole like if you're in you know high winds that can just help reinforce your rain fly if it starts to catch wind and it also helps make it a bit more taut down here's these toggles or a D toggle on the upper end And yeah, like I said, all in all, I think it is a very cool and interesting concept. And I mean, you guys seen the size of it, the uh, weight, I don't remember off the top of my head. You know, not the heaviest thing in the world, but it, it does take up a lot of pack space and is heavier than... I just realized that I did this strapping system right here along these corners uh, slightly wrong. But this is how I just set it up. The first time I need to undo this this goes around the base of the tree and that will make this a lot more stable I still got a bunch over here on this other side but in theory unless the tree that you would hooked up to is just way too big around and even then you should this should be long enough for you to uh, be able to come back through and then this will make it uh, very stable kind of snug it up evenly on both sides still there's that but then once we get this other upper end done we should be good so yeah this right here is how it should look once you uh, have it set up properly and I'll get back in it again here before we get the food going there it goes another there's been a bunch of airplanes today but that right there is definitely a lot tauter too with the bug netting which makes sense so you know i just hadn't even messed about with looking like the the instruction manual that comes with it uh i did look at that the first time but like the the visual representation wasn't the best for explaining the those corner straps but it's all good, we got it now. And yeah, like this thing right here now, essentially, you shouldn't be able to uh, flip it or turn it over. And, and it lays flatter too. Oh, it does have these handles right here that you can grab to help uh, like adjust yourself. this canvas pouch because this thing has not sharp edges but I just didn't want them to wear against that inside pocket of my bag I've got a ground steak with onions a very large ground steak with onions and to cook it we are going to be attempting to use this BCB stove which use I think like a bio a bioethanol type fuel tab instead of the like espit type fuel tabs uh, and then this is a BCB mess tin so this is like a British military type deal uh, these come off of uh, MRE mountain uh, so far I've been using these some just uh, at the house 
and they're a lot handier than I would give them credit for. Um, but I just, I really like the high walls, nice flat surface. They're aluminum. Uh, still a big fan of my titanium stuff, but these also don't really weigh much of nothing. And then the stove, you know, is just something that uh, could come in really handy. Now, normally it's supposed to have 8 to 10 minute burn time, so we'll probably have to burn one and then light the other one. I brought two with me if that's not enough, which it should definitely be enough just to make a hamburger steak. We can always start a fire, but I thought it was worth bringing and using. I think a deer just run through the woods down there. But yeah, these things right here is what it takes. These fire dragon fuel cubes. And I mean, I've already used this stove a couple times and I've used it in some videos before. This is just a windscreen. This is easier to do whenever you're down on the ground. This is just a windscreen that you close the sides on and it is getting pretty breezy, so. forgot to hit the record button there but I just took and put this in the pan so this is a pre-seasoned hamburger steak I'm hoping that this stove with the flame since this will sit on here flat like that that the heat will be pretty evenly distributed because it's right from the bottom I don't know if it'd be better for me to do it like this probably like this I got some steak sauce, and no, this is not a whole bottle. There's just like maybe right there from the word original down, so I, I didn't think it was really worth putting in another bottle. I just would throw the whole thing because this is plastic. And yeah, so like these right here don't smell great, but they don't smell nearly as bad and as toxic, and they're not as those aspic cubes. Sure, I get it plopped down in there evenly. And then another nifty thing that i seen on MRE Mountain's store page is this uh, Titan lighter. I can't, I can't remember. I think this is, oh wait, there we go. Yeah, Exotac, USA Company. It's essentially a round Zippo. Uh, but we'll just go like that. And it's lit. Put that back in our pocket. Just going to get the spoon handle that we're going to use. I did forget to bring my leather gloves. So we'll just kind of have to roll with the punches on that one. I'm going to put a splash of water in there just to help keep things from sticking. And the juices from the onion should also help aid in that. Man, if I would have thought, I could have brought those titanium tongs. That is doing the trick. Try to get those onions sauteed a little bit better. Hey guys, I would say that is good as far as the way I like my burgers, um, my hamburger steak. My cheeseburgers, I like to be more pink on the inside. Uh, but I like to get my hamburger steak, not, you know, well. Now I'm starting to get some char, but yeah, I took and cut these into fours just to uh, check them again. And these are definitely done. The onions are perfectly caramelized, and I would say that, that right there probably has about another minute or two on it. Probably about two minutes on it. You could see, too, like that right there was a very thick piece of meat and that's even after you know the bit of shrinkage that you get with cooking it that might not have looked as big in the back i just thought i would do this and yeah nothing really just a little bit of juices up top but they're like scraping off the pan nothing's like 
stuck, none of the onions stuck. Just a bit of charred grease. Okay, so one uh, selling point of this type of hammock is when a bunch of yellow jackets show up trying to molest your food, you can fit in this thing, sit crisscross applesauce. You know, your center of gravity has changed a bit, so like you have to find where you need to uh, be leaning, but I will be able to sit in here now and eat my food uninterrupted, but it turned out very good. Alrighty. Let's take and get the bed and stuff situated. Got the zip up wooby going to be probably unzipping this because I want to sleep with my boots on because I have no overhead cover and it's definitely probably going to rain uh, at night or early morning. So I could get, you know, my poncho out and cover everything up. And I also am wanting to take my bag, like I said, it is because of the frame and stuff in this and the fact that I still have other gear loaded into it it would just be a lump underneath me in the middle of the night so i am going to put this in there and then set my bag make sure there's no insects on my bag that would defeat the purpose of the bug net i also brought a flannel because it is cooling off quick and the low for the night i just looked is 50 to 51 degrees and this sunshine right here is very cool and nice to have moving around but i'm pretty sure once I get stationary it is going to uh, be needed now because of the angle that this thing has is at right now and since I'm gonna have my bag down at the bottom to stop me from sliding I, I don't even need to use my inflatable pillow because my the elevation of my head is kind of perfect my headlamp still rocking with the coast headlamp on this one because even though it's dropping and the bugs are slowing down, they're still out, so having the red light is a must. Oh, and then I forgot about my lantern that we're going to hang up on the inside. This is that Gabrielle lantern that I've been using for who knows how long now. This thing has a super long battery life, and I've had this thing out in pouring rains, and it is still doing just fine, so... Hoping that having my bag in here will kind of help keep the sleeping pad from moving around as much. Zip up wooby that we got from uh, Army Surplus World. We've been using it quite a lot. I think on almost every single overnighter since uh, since I started using it. And like I'll have links to pretty much everything i'm using if it's something that's still available like things like this are definitely still available and things that i know that i hadn't heard of for a long time and that's why i like youtube so much is because you get exposed to uh, new gears and new methodologies that you might otherwise not have been exposed to <coughs> well guys i am uh all situated uh, here in the hammock i've been chilling in here for about 45 minutes the uh the lantern light is what is illuminating everything in here and it feels uh super cozy um i don't have claustrophobia or nothing but like out of all the hammocks and stuff i've stayed in this one is the most open feeling uh just feels like you're in a big one-man tent um uh, the thing that I have noticed the most is this thing is holding heat because uh, right when right when I went to uh, get in, I was starting to get just like not cold, but you know starting to feel that little uh, cool breeze in the air, and I was thinking about putting uh, my flannel on, but I can already tell just based off past experience uh, having this wooby and this zipper wooby is actually thicker than uh, some of the standard ones that uh i currently that i have and have used 
Yeah, so it definitely, you know, it's holding heat. It doesn't have a reflective surface or nothing like that. It's not meant to be a, you know, it's not meant to be a wintertime bivy or anything, but I wouldn't want to use this rain fly during the, uh, the summers. Just now that we're going into fall and the nights are dipping down uh, in the low 50s, uh, it, it's perfect for being able to sleep and then use a light sleeping bag or blanket uh, as long as you do have some type of underneath cover with this one being the square design i don't know uh i didn't analyze it that closely how well like an under quilt would work uh, i'm sure they make them for flat lay hammocks but kind of the whole point of having the flat lay is in my opinion is the fact that you can now use a sleeping pad of your choice uh, for me and for this type of setup one of these foam mats rather it be the Z fold like this or just a roll out Foam mat is perfect because it gives just enough cushion It matches that sway. It's not going to slide around as bad as a like as a, <clears throat> like a mummy like a blow-up Type of sleeping pad and you don't really need the extra R values unless you're using this thing in extremely cold weather oh no really happy with it glad i figured out that strap deal as you can see my bag full-size bag fits down there at my foot area just fine foot resting against it with a good foot of space left up here above my head um so you could take and stick you know extra clothing up there that you wouldn't use in and then i just got the sunglasses stuck in that side pocket right there so well guys, with all that said, I am going to hit the hay and hopefully in the morning we wake up to some rain because I really want to see if this leaks or if there's any spots. I can't tell now that it's dark and I've got everything in here and I'm in a comfortable position. If anything is touching the rain fly that could cause condensation to come in, but I'll keep you updated. Well, I guess I'll see in the morning and tell you what went down. The camera cut out, but I was about to say good night. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> well, if you can, uh, if you can hear it got very windy, and so I mean, it, it is very windy. Um, and uh, we started getting uh, this like steady pitter patter of rain at about one uh, like one a.m. I'd say. Uh, it's just now six a.m. <clears throat> Uh, and it's supposed, based off the weather radar, it's supposed to come in heavier at like 8-ish, or like 7.30, 8-ish. So, I think since I'm up and I fell asleep and everything, well, we still got a pitter-patter. I looked around the interior of the tent. I mean, there's absolutely no, no water got in. Um, I know now you can't see nothing. I hope you can hear me over the wind. Well, that was just a big tree limb that fell off. But yeah, I wanna, because of the wind and stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'm packing everything up. But this hammock done very well, it does fight in the wind. So yeah guys, I always really appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Share the channel with your friends, family, anybody enjoys good old outdoor activities. And uh, until the next one, adios.